As the soul traverses the physical and metaphysical plane, one of the biggest challenges is what is right relationship for our Atman, our true selves, and with the material world around us. The lunar eclipse that took place this morning is in Anuradha Nakshatra. And so for the next two weeks, the eclipse energy is going to be in this nakshatra. So the way that I organize these videos is to tell you about the energy because they will describe what type of conflict you can anticipate and the intentions behind what interactions you'll have. So I start with that and then the second part of the video will be a highlight for your sign so that you can check on exactly where in your life and how in your life this might be affecting you. I do recommend that you watch your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. Every person reads differently, so if you're new to my channel, find out which of these works for you. I do these every new moon and full moon. So when the new moon cycles come around and the full moon cycles come around, you know which of the signs in these videos resonates most effectively for you. So Anurata is the nakshatra of dedication and devotion. It is symbolized by an archway, as in the goal, the thing that you're moving toward. The purpose behind Anurata is Dharma, which is right. What is right? And so Anurata really looks at right relationship. And it's this period in the soul growth where you're becoming more material. And as you become more material, you start to lose your connection with the divine. And so what Anurata is doing is it's looking at how are we tending to our inherent worth? How are we seeing to that? And specifically, how we are seeing to that through our relationships. So we're looking at several aspects of right relationship. Anurata Nakshatra is in the constellation of Scorpio. And one of the elements of Scorpio is deception. We're looking at what is your relationship with deception or also what is hidden. So to illustrate, here are two Anurata natives. The first is an actor who plays in two major productions. One of them is Game of Thrones, in which he plays a person who is completely immersed in espionage. So he deals in secrets. And then in Downton Abbey, he's a newspaper man. And the same thing, he deals in secrets. So on a low end of Scorpio, it's a person who deals in worldly secrets. On the high end of Scorpio, another Anurata ascendant is C.C. Zayn, who was the person selected to write out the Brotherhood of Light, ancient hermetics into student format so that people could access hidden knowledge, occult knowledge. So you see, what is hidden? Is it the secrets of the world that are used to manipulate people and gain power? Or are they the secrets of occultism and spirituality to help people assist in humanity? The next element is our relationship with relationships. So what is right relationship when it comes to relationships? The deity associated with Anurata is Mitra, and Mitra is a god of the sun, and Mitra exposes things, exposes the path. It's interesting as in lunar eclipses, eclipses expose things, right? So you have Mitra, the god of the sun, and Varuna is also associated, and Varuna rules cosmic law. Varuna is also the ruler of the deep and in charge of night. So you have Varuna, you have night, and then you have Mitra, day. And here's the thing with it. Night and day are distinctly different. At dawn, they meet, they merge, and one becomes the other. At dusk, they meet and merge, and one becomes the other. While they have these parts where they merge together, they are distinctly separate. Just like in your friends group, in your relationships groups, uh, with your significant other, with anybody you do dealings with. This is business, this is anything. The people you deal with, you contribute to them and they contribute to you because you are each distinctly different. You bring some attributes to the relationship which enhance each other, but if you all brought the same attributes, it wouldn't really be a relationship, it would just be a continuation of yourself, you see? So you have to be separate, night and day, you have to be separate, in order to be distinctive. 
And in order to have relationships that complement one another, you bring different features. So that's why you separate, develop yourself, and then come together. So while the deity Mitra is a union maker, the ruler of Anuradha is Saturn. Boundaries. Another item with Anuradha is right relationship with our experiences. Associated with Anuradha is the lotus flower. And the lotus flower is something that has its roots in the mud and then has a long root and at the top of the water has a beautiful flower that's seen. Now, if you're looking, you only see the beautiful flower, but the beautiful flower is the result of a lot of work and roots in the mud. The enactment of Saturn with us as humans moving toward divinity, we need to have our roots in the mud. We need to have our roots in humility, based in humility. And why is that? Well, did you ever grow from an experience that was not difficult? Did you ever have everything going well for you and then at the end of it you said, my God, I really am a new person because of that? And not necessarily, it doesn't really work like that. It's the humility, it's the circumstances, the life experience that cause us to be humble, that cause us to feel humility, that enable us to develop the spiritual fortitude to ascend. What is right relationship with devotion? Well, if you merge with a thing, you cannot be devoted to the thing. You cannot actually love the thing because it's part of you. It stops, right? If you merge with the thing you are devoted to, you lose the ability to interact with that thing. Anurada is the power of devotion and worship. And it's about the coming together. You know when you have, you have an amazing meditation or if, um, if you work with intuitive gifts, but these different ways that we contact the divine. These different ways that we contact parts of ourselves that aren't worldly parts of ourselves. That's a particular feeling that unless you've done it, you don't know what it's about. So you can't describe it to somebody because they don't know what it's about if they haven't done it. But if you're on this path, the difficulties with experiences, with people, with all of the troubles, when you have that connection, it makes it all worth it. The thing about it, we don't walk every day, all day with that connection. You can step in and out of it. Sometimes you stay with it for longer periods of time than others, but it's not all the time with you. And in a way, you see that makes it a bit more special because you can connect with it and then you can come back and do your work here in the material plane with the knowledge of what you really are and with the knowledge of what you can truly access. So that's another way that Anurata expresses. We individuate from our bliss so that we can interact with and appreciate our bliss. So the lessons of Anurata are about aspiring toward our inherent worth and doing that through relationship and being devoted to something without losing ourselves in something. And another element of Anurata is the idea of changing forms. As a soul, we come to the earth and we take a body, we incarnate, because through this incarnation, we have experiences, we have relationships, but we live so that we can grow and learn and evolve. And in the process of that, we have to shake off what our form was when it no longer serves our growth. So we take on a new form. Sometimes that comes in the form of physically a new appearance, sometimes that comes in a new profession, sometimes that comes in the form of different personality, sometimes that comes in the form of different friends, of different groups. But where we are currently reflects what our growth has been to this point. And so when you take on a new form, it may be that you were entering a new phase of life. So whatever's happening, whatever's coming and going, what you do with eclipses is you just let it go. That's what you can do. 
It's happening. There's nothing you can do to stop it. It's happening. What you can do is control the way that you react to it. You can control how you're going to allow it into your life, whatever's happening, and how you're going to move into, with ease, the next phase. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This eclipse energy is taking place in your 11th house, and 11th house are your friends, your partnerships, your associations, the people you hang out with by choice, the people you do business with by choice. And this is all about the Anurata energy of, are you in right relationship with your networks and associations? Do the relationships that you choose, do the circles that you belong to, do they help you realize who you are? Do they help you realize your inherent potential? your inherent worth? And do they inspire your growth? Do they inspire your growth in a way that is equal to how you inspire the growth of the people you interact with? Capricorn is a, a hard sign, yet a soft sign. So it's confusing to people because on the one hand, Capricorn is very hardcore and you know where you're going, you know what you're doing. You have no problem cutting people off. You've, <laughs> you have no problem with uh, Saturnian. You have no problem with the boundaries. Like you have no problem with being about what you're about. Conversely, and what people don't really know about Capricorns is you're not ruthless in the way that is heartless. There are still these, like, you feel bad sometimes. You just feel bad. And it's not a deficiency. It's not because you have it's not because you have cancer placements, right? But you feel bad because not that you feel bad about yourself, but you feel bad because other people aren't at your level and you know they're not gonna get to your level. And it's not that you feel bad about being about what you're about. You feel bad sometimes reminding people that they're not at your level. And that's the element that people don't really understand about Capricorn. So when it comes time for who's around and who's not around, the weakness, weakness of letting people in who don't really belong there, that's one of the few vulnerabilities that Capricorn has. And it's because you have a heart. But what this energy is suggesting to you now is for how hard you've worked, and for how far you've come, and for how much you have put in the effort, the time, what you've given up that nobody else even knows about, how many years you have aspired to set things up, how many years you have arranged people, resources, like kept things warm, for like nobody even has a clue about that what you've maintained and how you have maintained them very diligently, even though you can't even explain it to somebody else, the groundwork that you've set up to be where you are today. The other signs don't get that. They don't do it like that. You get it. From the minute you start to think, you step through life setting things up. And not even things that will be immediately helpful. Like you can see it 20, 30 years into the future and imagine that someday that might be useful. So you set it up. You keep the relationships going. You check in with them. Like you know how much you need to do. Nobody knows how much work you put in. Nobody. So when it comes to you feeling a little bit bad because of who's in your circle and who's your who you're letting around you, don't. Now's not that time. Anybody who shows up needs to be the level you are. Because if you're going to get where you're going, this is not a person thing, like insert your name. It's not a thing about you. It's a thing about your work in the world. It is a thing about your spiritual purpose, your soul's utility in this world why you chose to be here, why you chose the body you did, why you chose the experiences you did, why you chose everything you did. Now's not the time.
time to pat the other people on the head who haven't done the work you've done because you've done work. So what the energy is saying to you is who you associate with. They need to be a reflection of you. They need to be a reflection of your level. They need to be a reflection of your quality. And if you belong to any groups, imagine somebody from the outside looking in. They need to gauge you based on anybody else in that group. And that's say, say like if you're the one qualified person in the group, if somebody doesn't know you, can they pick someone else out from the group and understand the quality? So like I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, you, your groups represent you. So what groups you belong to say something about you. Whatever that looks like, pay attention to it. Because where you're going, that matters. Everything matters. So do you have right relationships with your networks and associations? Now, across the way we have fifth house. So do you have right relationship with your fun and your enjoyment? because that is not something that comes naturally to Capricorn. Fun is um, maybe something you schedule, but it's not prioritized. It's something you enjoy, but it's not something you prioritize because you don't see it as essential to moving forward. Think about it, it is essential to moving forward. It's much like if you have, if you have a hard workout and you need to rest, the fifth house of pleasures is your way of rest, is your way of rejuvenation. And it is a way to get in touch with your creative side, which when you get back to work and when you get back into your, um, I say your networks and associations, if you want to think about it like this, it helps you develop and it helps you be more of who you are so you can bring more of who you are into the world. And that's really what you're doing. So the second thing is, right, so the first thing is watch for sudden change in your 11th house. Second thing is, do you have right relationship with your networks associations and also with the way that you enjoy yourself, the way that you seek pleasure and your creative endeavors? And then the third item is what secrets are there? What things are you afraid are gonna come out? Do you have elements of your past where it maybe wasn't your best time? So if you're on a spiritual path, there's a lot of time that wasn't your best time. So you change, you evolve, you grow. That's what a path is about. And remember the lotus, you have your roots in the mud, you have your roots in the humility of the experiences. Well, when you're getting used to that humility, it takes some getting used to. You don't always adapt to that well and right away, especially if you're a driven sign and you're being limited because you're, uh, it's very frustrating when the result does not equal the effort that you're putting in. So just to say, if any of that frustration came out in ways that you just really wish wouldn't be brought up, now's the time. Scorpio is about transformation, and so what this energy is saying, and especially what the, what the eclipse season is, bring it to the light. Bring it to the light where it can't hurt you anymore, where you don't have to think about it anymore, because secrets, even things that you just wish would remain hidden, these are shadow elements, and shadow elements control you. It's another, another Scorpio thing. Secrets control you. And when you're moving forward, as now you're changing forms, nothing controls you. Nothing can control you. So you're changing forms, you're stepping forward on your path. You've done all of this work. Whatever baggage you're carrying, set it down. If it's appropriate, forgive yourself for it, whatever that looks like, but you're allowed to release it. You don't need it where you're going anymore. Now's the time to step into who you are. 